video about it, but uh, there's so much going on. I thought, let me go live. So uh, I didn't put out any notifications or anything like that. But uh, come on in, everybody. Come on in. Let the games begin. J. Roos Theory live back at you guys. Hope everybody's having a great, wonderful day. And uh, hope you take some time out to come chop it up with your dude, Jay Roos. Make sure you uh, subscribe to my backup platform in WJ. And that would be great. Popcorn Boxing, what's up? In the building. In the building, absolutely. Popcorn Boxing, man. This guy's been riding with me and Andrew Tucker for a while, man. So he's uh, one of them loyal subscribers. Y'all be like Popcorn Boxing. <laughs> I just wanted to talk about an interview I saw with True School Sports. Shout out to them. Shout out to Philip Hergovich. Man, I didn't know this. Uh, I didn't know this guy was so funny, man. Hold on. Let me put... There we go. <laughs> Hergovich was, man, he was just going off on the heavyweight division. He said that Anthony Joshua's had everything handed to him and his career has been tough and that's what makes him mentally strong. He said when AJ first started, he had the power, no skills. And then now he's got skills and the power. So he's talking about, I guess it's hard to want to fight when you have 300 million in your bank account. I don't see AJ having a problem with being focused and training with the uh, alleged 300 million that he has in the, in the bank account. He always shows up in shape. So I don't know, man, but the dude was, uh, he was just funny, man. He was, uh, the interviewer asked him about Daniel Dubois. <laughs> and he said, Daniel Dubois, he's like, out of everybody that speaks English, he's the only one that I can compete with in the press conference and in the ring. He's like, I'll smash him at the press conference and the ring. I think he called him stupid and everything. I was like, said he beat him before, I guess in sparring. The only one he seemed to show uh, love to was Joseph Parker, but then he was like, hey, I beat him in the amateurs too and I would smash him. <laughs> I don't know, Hergovich was so funny, man. He's picking very carefully to retain that title shot He's not been fighting anyone good himself. Yeah, he hasn't. Thunders Productions, what's up to you, man? I appreciate you tuning in. Just here talking about an interview I saw with True School Sports interviewing Philip Hergovich, and the dude was hilarious, man. I thought he's this robotic guy, but he, he was really funny, man. He was talking about the interviewer asked him something about fighting, I think, Joshua, and he's like, are you are you crazy or something and he's talking about how pretty he was and man even when asked about his fight on day of reckoning against mark demore he was laughing and said he has a better record than deontay wilder he's like he's a beast <laughs> that dude is hilarious man <laughs> I got to admit, I, I, I'm going to really uh, start watching Hergovich more now, man. I didn't know he had such a an upbeat personality. The dude is hilarious, man. He was he was just going in on everybody. And he likes Riddick Bowe, and he even went in on Zhang. He said, um, the interviewer said, uh, you know, Zhang said he was the left-handed version of the Southpaw version of Riddick Bowe. He was like... He's like, what, huh? <laughs> He's like, he throws 10 punches around. Riddick Bow was relentless. He said uh, that he beat him and that he just didn't have any power that fight. The reason, uh, I guess, he didn't stop Zhang. And he's saying, like, Zhang's talking about everybody else, but he's not calling me out. 
Wow, if Herkovich's uh, boxing career doesn't work out, he might want to try some stand-up comedy. That dude is funny, man. <laughs> and he pointed at the, the building around him. I forget who he was referring to, but he's like, just like that wall is blank, and just like that wall is colored, that's how sure I am that I'll beat this guy. And uh, what's also funny to me about these fighters that can hardly speak English is that uh, they still manage to know how to get in some uh, cuss words. <laughs> Shout out to True School Sports. They did a great interview with the uh, Hergovich show, man. That was really entertaining, and I didn't expect it you know, to be all that, but that dude was calling out everybody, talking about he could beat Daniel Dubois in the press conference and the ring. <laughs> Do you think the average guy in the street would call Dubois stupid? <laughs> Absolutely not. Yeah, I don't know why uh, people keep taking shots at Dubois and he's like one of the nicest guys in the sport. But, you know, that could be a diversion tactic. You know, maybe if you insult the guy enough, they'll actually think you want to fight him. You know how that works. But uh, he's talking again, like AJ's had everything handed to him and this and that and I wouldn't say that, you know, you just sign with the right guy, I guess. But you can't say everything was handed to him. But, uh, Hergovich, man, I'd... <laughs> go check out that interview, True School Sports, Hergovich. And uh, other things going on in the boxing world, uh, the Tim Zhu, Keith One Time Thurman fight has been completely canceled due to injury regarding Keith Thurman. So I don't know what's next for Keith Thurman. He seems like he's having a lot of uh, injury problems. So I don't know how long he can continue his boxing career if that's the uh, if that's what's going to keep happening. AJ turns up when you diss him. I was thinking the same thing, Thunders Productions. I was thinking, you sure you want to go down this route, Hergovich? Waleen tried it, and Ganu tried it a little bit, and it didn't work out too well for those guys. So Hergovich might want to back up off the jokes, you know, because uh, AJ don't look like he thinks anything is too funny right now. He just says, I, I just like to fight. Like, I'll fight whoever. And Hergovich was saying, even comparing himself to the great pugilist specialist Lennox Lewis. He was saying when Lewis was fighting, even Ali compared himself to Ali's, like people were talking about Lewis was boring and this and that. And then, you know, now look, and he was saying, you know, when people call him boring, I guess he's saying they're going to look back years from now, be like, you know, that Hergovich was a great fighter, you know, but that remains to be seen. He has a lot to show me in the ring. So far, his interviews have been a little more exciting than his actual fights, in my humble opinion. That's just my humble opinion. We got Teddy Ted in the building. What's up, Teddy? Five minutes. Yep, Lewis was boring. Not at all. Not at all. If Lewis was boring, then that uh, Mike Tyson fight wouldn't have been the biggest selling fight in boxing history at the time. Lewis might have made it look too easy while you might say he's boring because he'd go in there and it usually was a one-sided fight except for Klitschko and Mercer in the second uh, Holyfield fight. Everything else was pretty much a walk in the park. <laughs> he said, I'm trolling. I got you, man. Teddy be having jokes and jokes and jokes. Do you see Deontay Wilder versus Francis Ngannou? If so, I'm hoping it's in the boxing ring and not in the uh, cage because uh, Emmanuel Brodericks, what's up? What's up to you, man? Appreciate you tuning in. I'm hoping Deontay Wilder and Ngannou, that would actually be, I picked Ngannou before because of his weight, but now the way he responded to that Wilder punch, uh, I'm going to have to change that. I think Wilder might get him up out of there. Teddy says, laugh out loud. You know I'm not a Lewis fan. You mean... um. You're talking about Derek Lewis, right? Not Lennox Lewis. <laughs> and um, yeah, For, I lost my thought there, y'all. What are we talking about? Oh yeah, Rick, uh, I said Riddick Bo, uh, Deontay Wilder, Francis Ngannou. Did y'all see that interview Francis Ngannou did with uh, Ariel Hassani on the MMA Hour yesterday? 
he was talking crazy, man. Like he kept talking about how sleepy he was before the fight. And he said, I even told my trainer when I was warming up in the dressing room and I was hitting the pads, like, I don't feel right. Why am I sweating? And, you know, he did have a good point. And it's the one I said, you know, they can't talk about fighting at 3 a.m. is the reason he didn't do well because Joshua fought at the same time he fought at. So, uh, but he seems to be trying to, um, all Lewis, even Ray Lewis, come on, y'all, nine people and two likes. <laughs> yeah, get them uh, thumbs up, get them likes up, y'all. Oh, shoot, Andrew Tucker touched down in the building. Give me that nine ninety nine. Thank you, Andrew Tucker. He says it's time to stand up at the top of the pyramid. Keep up the great work, big bro. What's coming is massive. Shout out to Andrew Tucker coming through with the super chat. Not just the chat, but the super chat. Go subscribe to my dude, Andrew Tucker, if y'all have it, man. Andrew Tucker's in the building. Floyd Mayweather said he would like to work with Francis Ngano. Yeah, he could use Floyd's help, especially with defense. But uh, yeah, go subscribe to Andrew Tucker World. He's making beats. He's making uh, quality highlights of fights that have happened. So subscribe to my dude, Andrew Tucker World, y'all. Comes with that energy on the live streams. Thunders Productions, he should have took a nap before the fight. Yeah, man, Lennox Lewis used to take naps before the fight. Definitely should take naps. But it sounds like Francis Ngannou was trying to imply that he was drugged before the fight because... Why you keep talking about you was sleepy, man? I think that was fear. I think fear crept in. He tried to act like no, because I'd already fought Tyson Fury, and uh, I wasn't. I was used to that. Nah, but Anthony Joshua, you knew, was a different animal. Thunder's production says Rocky Marciano would take a nap before all his fights. Oh, he did that too. I didn't know that. Yeah, I did not know that. Popcorn boxing says sounds like Wilder likes excuse like he was poisoned. Yeah, I thought of the same thing. I thought of the same thing. I was like, we're not going to start with the spiked water and the referee and the gloves and the commission It's like, no, nah, no, nah, I ain't got to. Even if you think these things, it's not always wise to say it to the public because, you know, we're going to take that as uh, you're making excuses. And I did a video. I said, I don't want no excuses after this fight. If AJ makes quick work of, of, uh, and Ganu, and now here the excuses come. Emmanuel Brodericks, yeah, he says just accept the loss in Ganu. Yeah, just accept the loss. Don't come with no um, well, you know, hey, I had a migraine and a hangnail, and um, you know, I just wasn't feeling it. Hey, that's part of being a fighter. You're not gonna always feel it when it's time to step between those ropes, but you gotta be professional enough to suck it up and get focused, man. You know. Everybody's showing love to Andrew Tucker in the chats. Yeah, man. We're going me and Andrew still gonna be doing some live streams together. That's that's uh something that just has to happen. You know, it don't stop Andrew Tucker Army. Man, this uh this Nganu thing though is really just bothering me. I was like, cause he was going on and on about it. I'm like, man, don't please don't come with the sleepy excuse, man. I I've heard a lot of excuses before fights, but I don't think I ever heard a dude talk about I lost because I was sleepy. Like, well, then you should have slept the night before. And that might be something else. It might have been nerves. Maybe he didn't get enough sleep the night before. So, you know, that's on him and his team. They should have known how to relax their dude. Dewey Cooper hasn't been seen. I saw him do one interview after the fight and Ganu's trainer, and that was like a minute long. He looked shy like he couldn't even look at the camera. When before he had a lot to say with that gravelly voice, now he's like, um, nah, I'm going to go into hiding. So will the Fury versus Usyk fight ever happen? I do believe so, because I saw Fury looking more fit than I have ever seen him, you know. Uh, Prince Turkey ain't taking uh, any more no's for an option. He's, um, uh, you pull out of this fight, you will be breaking me off a nice 10 million, 10 million, so, uh, you know what it is. You know what it ain't. <laughs> Thunder's production says he knew AJ was a power puncher and got nervous. That's what I'm thinking. See, when you fought Fury, you thought, you know, he might outpoint me, but he's not going to hurt. He's not going to hurt me. You know, what's he going to do? And so when you go in there against a guy that you know can knock your head off and probably outbox you, I think fear crept in and um, disguised as sleep. 
I still wouldn't say it publicly, though. It just looks kind of weak. I would just give AJ his props, call it a day, and look forward to my next fight. And he's still interested in boxing. He said, um, you know, he feels like he owes boxing something. And I know what he means since he took that L. Adderi says, Floyd Mayweather, he's a very skilled guy. He was unbelievable from the highlights that I was able to see. I would like to work with him someday if he wants to fight one of the top heavyweights. Wow. Wow. Emmanuel Broderick says, uh, Fury versus Usyk is too hard to predict for me. Yeah, that's a tough one, man. I first picked Fury, then now I'm saying Usyk. And, um, but... You know, I'm not trying to hedge my my bet, so to speak, but I think uh, I think Usyk wins, and if he doesn't, I think it'll be a draw. Could be wrong if Fury wins. I want Fury to win, so we get AJ Fury. I'm not too interested in seeing Usyk AJ again, even though I think AJ would win that third uh, rubber match, or not rubber match, but uh, that third fight. You know, so I think Prince Turkey wants Fury to win, too, because he knows that's the fight that the public would rather see. Teddy Brock Shot says, take it as you want. I still think Fury puts put a WWE show. <laughs> yeah, he might, man. Fundura and Timmy. Andrew Tucker World said, bro, I couldn't find that Dillian fight. Much love and respect to him. Like, yeah, I couldn't either, man. It's like they didn't want nobody to see it. And what I did see wasn't the best quality. One looked like it was shot from the audience on a cell phone. And um, look, from what I saw, it didn't look like a very uh, competitive fight because Christian Hammer looked like he wasn't really in there to win. And Dillian gave him a piece of his mind <laughs> in the ring and after called him a coward and said he shouldn't even be paid to fight again because, you know, he quit on the stool and, you know, Dillian wanted to get some rounds in and show he was back. And, um, you know, it's like Dillian just can't seem to get anything to go his way lately, man. So he, this is all building mental toughness, though, for Dillian. You know, he's had so much to deal with outside the ring and drug tests and this and that and accusations. So it's making him mentally tough. He, he might come back and surprise a lot of people. Yeah, the heavyweight division is definitely getting interesting. And now that I found out uh, Philip Hergovich has a mouthpiece on him, it's even more interesting. I was like, I had no clue this dude was this funny. I had no clue. <laughs> Sounds like Ivan Drago cracking jokes. Tim Zhu by KO round six. Yeah, I don't know nothing about this dude that Tim Zhu's fighting now. I know about Keith Thurman, though, and I was picking Zhu to knock out Keith Thurman. I'm just not a Keith Thurman guy. I just, I don't like how the dude carries himself. Hergovich is just hilarious though, man. When he said his opponent, uh, I forget his name on Day of Reckoning, he said he had a better record than Wilder. He said he's a beast. Dude, that was, a, that was, a, that was hilarious. Teddy says, Thurman, once upon a time, needs to retire and stop wasting people's time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Keith, once upon a time, Thurman needs to, yeah, he's, I don't know what's up with dude. Fendura, that almost seven foot middleweight. Oh, yeah, I know who that is. Six, seven, man. And it's a trip when you see a guy that's real tall in the lower divisions. It's like, man, what's up, man? You might want to get some meals in there and move on up to heavyweight. Philip Hergovich versus Frank Sanchez. I got Frankie Frank on that one. I got Frank on that one. Um, it might be a little some rocky moments from Frank, but I think he outboxes uh, Philip, especially since he's a southpaw. Southpaws are very tricky. Philip said he was supposed to fight Prince Charles Martin, and then he said he didn't know what happened, but something about Charles Martin couldn't get uh, his papers right or something, so that fight never happened. I think uh, that would have been an entertaining fight, Charles Martin versus Philip Hergovich. 
Teddy says, I know you knew it because you wouldn't forget. <laughs> yeah. I got Philip. You got Philip over uh Frank Sanchez or Philip over um uh, over Charles Martin. I think Philip has a better chance against Charles Martin than uh Frank Sanchez. Uh Frank is uh Frank is one of them dudes that no matter how many times you see him box, he seems to dominate his opponent. And he's just always dominant. You know, he's got that he's got that Cuban style mixed with a little bit of uh, American. Emmanuel Broderick says Deontay Wilder versus oh, that would be a great fight. Deontay Wilder versus F.A. Jagba. I'm gonna have to pick Deontay Wilder in that one. I think Deontay's right is a little harder than F.A. Jagba. And, you know, Deontay Wilder's, of course, not the best boxer in the ring, but F.A. Jagba isn't either. He's a little robotic. You know, he's doing a lot of this like Zane was doing in his last fight, all this walking around, one, two. It's like real basic. So I think Deontay might line up that right and just eventually stop him, probably around the eighth. Who who do you think will win that fight, Emmanuel? Wilder or Jagba? Adari says Frank Sanchez versus Joshua. Ooh, that's a tough one, man. But like we've all been saying, Joshua seems to shine against Southpaws. So Joshua would probably beat Sanchez by decision, maybe even split decision. I don't know if you stopped Frank Sanchez. I saw Sanchez wobbled in the first round against I forget who Sanchez was fighting on the undercard, but he got uh, wobbled in the first round. But um, yeah, that's a Frank Sanchez is a tough fight for anybody. Teddy says Philip has got that determination factor like Foreman. Frank serious, but I think Philip next level power. Frank's just strong and calculated. Yeah, man, Hergovich, I think. Uh, yeah, Hergovich is probably the stronger guy of the two. You got uh, Frank Sanchez over Joshua. Yeah, it's, uh, that would be a, a tough fight for AJ because Frank is constantly moving around. He kind of fights like a middleweight in a heavyweight body. Emmanuel says, oh, I got Wilder on that one. Yeah, I got Wilder too. Vaughn Scott in the building from Scotland. Shout out to Scotland. Hello, Mr. Roos. How are you? I'm doing just lovely, man. Just uh, chilling in the cut like homie what? <laughs> just chilling. Thought I'd go live after seeing that Hergovich interview with True School Sports. Uh, I guess Hergovich is fi figuring I can't get the fights I want, so I got to let more of my personality shine through. Because, you know, we in America, we love to see uh, guys with a mouthpiece. Frank Sanchez is orthodox. No, I think Frank Sanchez is southpaw. I could be wrong, but I think Frank is southpaw. Unless he does the uh, switch-ups like Crawford. I could be wrong. Teddy says Frank is a black, a black Usyk with more power, less speed, and different technique. Yeah, I can see that. I can see that. I can definitely see that. Andrew Tucker said F.A. has gotten better at mixing up his attack, a very problematic fight for Wilder based on styles. Yeah, <clears throat> you're probably right. I haven't seen a, a Jaguar in action, and I hear he got married or is about to get married, so... Now he might find more peace of mind. <laughs> it's like uh, Kurt from Counterpunch was saying, like, a Jag always looked like he was irritated or something. So now maybe, uh, I'm paraphrasing, but now um, maybe he'll be have more peace of mind when he steps in them ropes. But, uh, yeah, I need to go check out a Jagba's uh, most recent fight. Emmanuel says Andy Ruiz versus Joe Joyce. Ooh, I got Andy Ruiz, I think. Joyce looks like he's, uh, I don't know, man. He, I don't know, man. 280. I mean, he looked okay. It's just Andrew Ruiz throws a lot of hard combos. That's a good fight, though. I would pay pay-per-view for that one. But I think Andrew Ruiz would outland him. Maybe not stop him, but outpoint him. 
popcorn boxing bon scott or brian johnson who is better? oh you're talking to okay thunders production says Usyk versus sanchez would be a chess match and very fast yeah man definitely that would be uh something to watch ruiz versus sanchez i got sanchez man constant elevation shout out to you i got sanchez on that one i think uh I think Ruiz is, has been too inactive to beat someone on Sanchez's level. Ruiz beats nobody right now. <laughs> Tell us what you really think, Teddy. <laughs> I know Ruiz ain't been in the ring since uh, that Ortiz fight. That's a long time ago. Bon Scott, oh, he's talking, okay. Too inactive and looking too bulimic. You, you're right about that, Teddy. I think, um, I actually think Ruiz fought better when he was heavy set. Seemed like when he got anorexic, he couldn't stay on his feet when he fought, um, what's the uh, other Hispanic fighter? Can't think of his name, but he got either knocked down once or twice, or I know he got knocked down at least once. Maybe, maybe the other was just wobbled, but um, yeah, I think Ruiz fights better when he's fighting at his uh, natural weight, which seems to be way up there. He's just not the same when he's trying to be... Uh, Mr. Universe. Sanchez, Bon Scott says Sanchez is orthodox. Okay. All right. I'm wrong about that. I'm almost sure though he was Southpaw. He's on the what is that? Ozen pick? What is that? Emmanuel says Joseph Parker versus Frank. Oh, that's a tough one. I'm gonna pick Joseph Parker by a little. I'm gonna pick Parker, man just based off experience and fighting the, the top guys in the better resume. But uh, it, it'll be a close one. Might be a split decision. Did you, uh, Bon Scott says, did you watch Zapita putting it on Maxi Hughes? No, I didn't even see that, man. I didn't even see that. I went back and watched Calzaghe versus Jeff Lacey, though. What a one-sided fight that was. And I watched uh, uh, Jess Willard versus Jack Dempsey. That was a beating, man. Adoree Pittance says Frank Sanchez versus Michael Hunter. Oh, yeah. I just watched. I take Frank in that just because I don't think Michael Hunter's had much activity. But I saw an interview today with Michael Hunter, and uh, he's always got a lot to say. He was saying if Fury was that big and didn't have as much movement, we wouldn't even be talking about him. Something like that. Yeah, Michael Hunter's doing some interviews. He just uh, did one today where he's a well, he's an outspoken guy. He said that Martin Bacoli is got a hard shell on the outside, but he's soft inside. So he's barking back at, at Bacoli. Martin McCauley's been doing some weird stuff, talking trash on people, releasing sparring footage with him and Joe Joyce. One of my subscribers told me about that. And then uh, Kurt from Counterpunch Boxing News did a video about it. Shout out to Kurt KD. And there was some more footage, though, that he didn't put out where he was on all fours, looked like about to throw up or just threw up. I would have liked to see him what led up to that. Was uh, Joyce putting hands on him? Because how did he go from knocking Joe Joyce's head headgear off to him on all fours, like throwing up? Bon Scott says, where is uh, Michelle Hunter? Comp I think you meant Michael. Where's Michael Hunter compared to Fury? He can have his opinion, but they are not on the same level. Yeah, there's no way... Uh, Michael Hunter could probably give him a little bit of a problem if he was active, but definitely not right now. And I don't see him beating Fury even if he was at his best. I think it's just too much size difference. Michael Hunter's got one of those cruiserweight bodies. Usyk makes it work for him, though. Andrew Tuckerworth says he got the flow and his lyrics is hot. Make room for the world's well, the world's master, MC, Mr. Bon Scott, give him his props. He can't be stopped. The king in the building standing at the top. Uh-oh. Andrew getting lyrical on y'all. Andrew dropping bars, man. He's dropping bars. AT Dub on the mic device getting mad nice. 
constant elevation says Bacoli needs to see white to see where he's at yeah that would actually be a fight i would like to see Bacoli versus white that's a that's a good matchup right there that would be a good matchup i wonder if they've sparred because Bacoli claims to have pretty much mopped everybody when it comes to sparring Bond Scott says saying if Fury didn't have the movement, he he has for his size like saying if your aunt had testicles, she would be her uncle. <laughs> I know it's yeah, when you think about it, yeah, if you're gonna take his highest qualities from him and say, well, uh, you know, Ali wouldn't be good if he wasn't fast, and uh, yeah, well then all right. I mean, would you even be talking right now, Hunter, if you had no skills? Wilder versus Bacoli, I got Wilder. I got wilder in that one. I just haven't seen Bacoli look impressive, man. I've seen him do a lot of talking and talking about who he knocked out and sparring, Usyk and Dubois. I think he said he knocked out Usyk twice, and I think Usyk was like, man, please. Frank Sanchez versus Joe Joyce or Martin Bacoli. Oh, man. I got to think about that one. I think Martin beat everyone sparring. Yeah, man. According to him, he probably beat George Foreman. Thunder's production. Bacoli needs to fight someone nowadays, not sparring stories. Yeah, it's like all he's got is, well, I beat this dude and nobody's calling me and nobody wants to fight. And then he drops some F-bombs. Like, man, first of all, show some respect. Get You know, get some big wins under your belt before you start going in on people. Emmanuel Broderick says Daniel Dubois versus Jared Anderson would be interesting too. Ooh, that is a good fight. Wow, I, will, I don't even know who to pick in that one. Hmm, maybe Dubois by a little bit. Right now, I guess the biggest American heavyweight we got is uh, upcoming, and he's by the name of Jake Paul. <laughs> Jake Paul moving up to heavyweight, but I saw footage of Mike Tyson sparring, Jake Paul's in trouble. I don't know how old the footage is. I saw it on Boxing Physique's channel, and uh, yeah, Jake's not ready for that smoke, man. Even if the footage was from way back when he fought Roy, Mike is looking, uh, man, let me tell you, man, all these people fooled by Jake Paul's wins over NBA people and this and that. He ain't felt something like Mike Tyson. People from the 80s and 90s, we just built a little different. Actually, a lot different. The footage is older than Jake. <laughs> Popcorn Boxing says Jake Paul should fight in Ghana. <laughs> Andrew Tucker World says, Jay Roos, give us some bars about boxing, big bro. Lyrical assassin, I'm blasting. Fasten your seat belts. Battle my channel, you're going to need help because I come for your dome. Battle me in the ring, man, head home. I don't even know what I'm talking about. But run up on me, you get knocked out. Fresh on the spot, I'm hot, I keep it real. Take out your grill, make your blood spill. Chill before I really go ham on them. Shout to Oak Town, put the bam on them. That's just a little bit, you know, just a little, little something, something. Right off the top, like dandruff, you know what I'm saying? You know how I do. You know how I do. Pass that mic device, I get dumb nice. <laughs> Make you spit out your teeth like hot rice. <laughs> Philip Hergovich versus Anthony Joshua. I want to see that fight. I, I'm, you know, I thought it might be a boring press conference because I thought uh, Philip was robotic. But now that I hear he's got a great sense of humor, uh, he takes himself seriously, but not too seriously. So I think it would be an interesting press conference. And the more, excuse me, the more he tries to get in AJ's head, I think the worse it'll be for him. I still got AJ by knockout, though. And Ganu versus Jarrell Miller. I got Jarrell Miller. I got Jarrell Miller. I got to see where Ngannou's head is, and I got to see how well he bounces back because that knockout he took against Joshua was uh, that was something saucy. Andrew Tucker World said, okay, okay, straight fire, hot, hot rice. <laughs> uh, thank you, man. Shout out to Andrew Tucker World, man. 
Shout out to him, man. Doing his thing. He got like 29,000 uh, people in on his live stream for the uh, Knockout Chaos. That is deep. I know it's hard to read comments when you're getting that many people coming in. Yeah, but I think Miller, you know, Miller's not a world beater, but I think he's got too much experience for Ngannou. And like I said, I'm going to have to see where Ngannou's head is at right now because he's talking crazy, talking about he was sleepy. Adore says Brian Bomack would be a very good boxing. Waiting for the comment to move up so I can finish reading it. Brian Bomack would be a very good boxing trainer for Francis Ngannou. Absolutely. Absolutely. In the words of Rocky Balboa, absolutely. Yeah, Brian Bomack, great trainer, man. Great trainer. Used to box himself. I like uh, trainers that used to actually box. I don't think, I don't know. I think I heard somewhere that uh, Ben Davison might have boxed for a little bit. I'm not sure, but right now Ben Davison's um, my my uh, favorite new trainer coming up. Him, Bo Mack, Andy Lee, you know, they seem to really understand the sport. And what I like, I've said many times about Ben Davison is how he studies everything about a fighter. He's not just studying what you do in the ring. He's going to watch your interviews and notice what you say, how you say it. Notice if you're not telling the truth. Point out if you contradicted yourself in one interview from the other. Ben Davison's going to study it all. You're going to get your money's worth if you hire Ben Davison. You better believe that. Ben Davison knows his, his boxing. Daniel Dubois versus Philip Hergovich. I got Dubois. I know uh, Hergovich had a lot to say. He said he beat Daniel up years ago. I don't know about all that, but uh, I think Daniel's just too active. He throws a lot of punches, and Hergovich doesn't do that. Hergovich uh, might beat him with the with the talk, but um, it's like True School Sports told him when Hergovich was saying that he could beat Daniel Dubois in the press conference and the ring, um, the interviewer was like, yeah, but Daniel Dubois is actually kind of funny now. You know, he's calling himself daddy. <laughs> so Hergovich might win the press conference. I just think the relentless pressure of Dubois will be a little bit much. Adderi, I got Bivol against B Baturbiev. I got Dubois against Hergovich. Andrew Tucker world. Yeah, that Bivol Baturbia fight is a tough one. I got Bivol too, though. I'm going to have to go with Bivol. I think he's just busier. Baturbia have a little uh, heavier hands, but I think Bivol's activity, I think he can take the punches even if he gets dropped. I think he'll get up and outwork Baturbia. Mon Scott says Iron Mike with the speed. Jake talking tall, but in the end, Jake Falls. Oh, Von Scott dropping bars. Adderi says Andy, Andy Ruiz versus Dubois would be interesting. Yeah, it would if Andy was active, but this current Andy, I got Dubois big. I think Dubois would stop Ruiz just off, just simply off activity and being busy. Andy Ruiz has just got to stay in the gym. You know, he keeps seems like holding out for these big $20 million paychecks when if you string up enough fights, it'll come to 20 million. Then you won't have to get one big check. You can get a couple small ones that make 20 million. Dubois too fast and powerful. I think he takes Hergovich like he did Miller. Yeah, I'm going to have to go with Dubois too, man. Yeah. I don't know if Hergovich would be the toughest puncher that he's faced, though, but I think he could handle it. I think the confidence that he gained from uh, beating uh, Jarrell Big Mouth Miller, I think uh, <laughs> I think that gave him a whole new confidence. 
how you gonna do that much talking before a fight and then lose and especially by by tko like you did all that talking and that's all you got Nah, man. Mm-hmm. H2O. Daddy, daddy, cool. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah, he should start calling himself instead of Dynamite Daniel Dubois. It should be Daddy Daniel Dubois. <laughs> yeah, he went in there and handled his business. Definitely spanked Jarrell Miller in that last round. Canelo versus Mungia is going to be a war. You know what, man? I don't even know anything about this Mungia guy. I keep hearing that he's he's le- too legit to quit, though. Shout out to MC Hammer. <laughs> but yeah, man, I don't, yeah, I don't even know, man. Who you got in that fight, though? Who you got, Can- Canelo or Mungia? I hope I'm saying his name right. At a race is Joseph Parker versus Daniel. Ooh, I got Joseph Parker. I-, I usually go against Parker, but he usually makes me look wrong when I go against him. So I'm going to say Joseph Parker by decision. Andrew Tucker World says, I got Jake Paul beating Mike Tyson. <laughs> I remember you were joking around with me a while back about that. This was a couple years ago. I never thought they'd even get in the ring. (laughs) And now we got Jake Paul versus Iron Mike Tyson. If this is a legit fight, Jake Paul, have your reservations for the ER room. (laughs) Can you picture Jake Paul knocking, knocking out Mike Tyson? That would be crazy. Bon Scott says, imagine the stamina Dubois must have to push Miller off for 10 rounds. Yeah, yeah, that big dude pushing him off. (laughs) Andrew gives two uh, smiley faces. I watched the interview that um, Mike Tyson's uh, trainer did, Rafael. I watched two interviews. He said, forget the age. He's like, that's already out the window. He said, I'm, he's worked with dudes and working with dudes in their 20s. He said, Mike Tyson is able to do things that they're not able to do and they're in their 20s. He said his reaction's great. He said he runs an hour before he even starts training. So he's running at, when people say Mike's going to tire out, he's 57. The dude's running an hour before he starts training. That's just his warm up. People have to stop putting everybody, like all 57-year-olds, just because you might know somebody in real life that's 57 and they can't pick up three pounds. Does that mean that applies to Mike Tyson? Oh, shout out to, uh, I forget her name in my chats, though. She was saying that her dad is 72 years old and he beat up two 20-year-olds that I guess they were trying to rob his house or something. And this guy ended up the hero of the neighborhood. 72-year-old man. Y'all need to stop looking at age so much. Y'all need to really stop all that. Because like I said, I'm 51, and there ain't a 20-year-old on the planet that's going to put hands on me. That's facts. There ain't no 20. I don't care if he's pro or amateur. Ain't no 20-year-old in the world going to knock me out. I will mop any 20-year-old. And if you doubt me, any 20-year-olds, come holler at your boy, Jay Roos. (laughs) Andrew Tucker said Tyson will hurt that kid. Yeah, man. I don't think, I don't think, uh, I don't know if Jake's just trying to cash out with this or what, but he's going to get hurt. He's going to get hurt. And um, Jake Paul versus, oh man, Jake Paul would get blasted. Jake's going to need concussion protocol. Yeah. Jake's just not ready for them combos. He's used to fighting guys. Oh, he fought a Golden Gloves guy, fought a former NBA player, fought MMA guys. That's not Mike Tyson. And again, I'm going to quote Mike Tyson's trainer, Rafael. He said, Jake Paul is training to fight. Mike Tyson is training to kill. So in other words, he's trying to end Jake Paul's reign because, you know, and he said there's no headgear. He didn't know the rules, but he said there's no headgear. And everybody's so concerned with Mike Tyson's health. Oh, he's going to get hurt because Jake is 30 years younger. Jake, Mike is fine. 
Michael B. just fine. <laughs> Trust me on that. He's taking punches from Lennox Lewis, Razor Ruddick twice, Evander Holyfield twice. Do you really think he's going to lose to Jake Paul? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Steven 6676, shout out to you, said Tommy Fury's the only real boxer he's faced. That's that's what I've been telling people. And then he lost that. Yeah, that's very true. Chet Perry was good. Jay Roos will might go full throttle. Yeah, I think so. Shout out to you, Chet. I think uh, Mike destroys Jake Paul. Special K, shout out to you. There will be a no knockout clause. Oh, it better not be or I'm not watching. I was going to try to go to that fight if it's legit. Thunderous Productions, Jack Dempsey at 87 years old, beat up two muggers outside his restaurant back in the, wow, I did not know that, I'm gonna have to look into that, Warren Chandler, shout out to you, laugh out loud, you just called Tommy Fury a real boxer, well he's real enough to beat uh, Jake Paul, that's uh, on record, Bon Scott says they wear an 18 ounce glove so Paul doesn't get hurt too bad accidentally, yeah, I don't want to see no 18-ounce gloves. Remember, Jake, Mike is 57 years old. What do you need 18-ounce gloves for? Remember, he's an old man. You should be willing to, you know, to fight bare knuckle, remember? Mike is using a walker. Emmanuel says, if Jake and Tommy had a rematch, who do you think would win? I, I still give Tommy. I said Tommy would win that, and Tommy will win again. Yeah, the Furies, of the fight, the fighting is just in them. This is just something Jake Paul just got into and then decided he wanted to do it as he got into it. And like people like Mike Tyson that's born in him. My Myaga beat up 10 teenagers. Wow. Wow. And that's another point though, going back to Mike Tyson, you know, and people keep talking about he's too old. Remember he was the youngest heavyweight champion when he uh, stopped Trevor Burbick. So if he can do great things at a young age, why can't he do something shocking at an older age? Mike Tyson was born to box. Jake Paul was not born to be a fighter. This is just something he got into. Mike Tyson was born to be a fighter. <laughs> Von Scott says, sorry, Jay Roost, that was a Karate Kid reference. <laughs> oh, man. Karate Kid. Yeah, they don't make them uh, 80s movies, man. I just like that time frame. Shout out to Viking Samurai. They, uh, his whole platform is dedicated to those movies we grew up on from the 80s. You know, the Blood Sports, the Rocky movies, the Steven Seagal movies. Shout out to Viking Samurai who won his fight in celebrity boxing. Oh, I missed that, Adoree. You had a message? I missed that. I don't know. Sometimes they disappear on my end. I don't know why that is. Technology. All those fighting movies are classics. Yeah, man. In a uh, Viking Samurai, he's in a movie coming out called The Last Kumite. He's got all the old action stars in it. They even got, I forget the composer's name to do the music. It'll be out on Amazon, I think, in May. It's got Billy Blanks in it. It's got the the villain from, uh, it was a kickboxer, Bloodsport, one of them, uh, Kesey. So, yeah, man. Thunder's production. Yeah, oh, I read that already. Yeah, man, those, those movies stands the test of time. You see, we didn't have no UFC back then or MMA, so if we wanted to see martial arts, we had to watch, uh, you know, those type of movies. I get Caballero versus for oh that's a good one. Caballero, um, man, I don't know. I'm gonna say a draw on that one. That's a tough one. I I did a video on Caballero. I keep forgetting about him. He, he was being slept on. Watch a great movie the other day, Warrior with Tom Hardy. Oh, I'm gonna have to check that out. Warrior, huh? Okay. I remember seeing. I still remember. Uh, Renting Lionheart from uh, Van Damme. Yeah, I think out of all the Van Damme movies, I thought Lionheart was more my speed. Mm -hmm. 
they had so many action movies in the 80s and uh, early 90s. I cried as a, Andrew Tucker World says, I cried as a kid meeting Van Damme. Oh, you met uh, Van Damme in Chicago, huh? Wow. I didn't know that, man. You met Van Damme. Oh, it seems like a real cool guy. And fun fact, and I've said it before, Van Damme is an extra in the dance hip hop classic movie, Break In. If you want to see Van Damme dance before he did in the martial arts movie, where he was real awkward looking, He's even more awkward looking if you see him dancing, breaking. He was an extra at the beginning of breaking. Go watch breaking the hip hop movie. Go watch that. You'll see Van Damme putting it down on the dance floor. Van Damme, I am handsome, was my wife's crush as a teenager. She had to settle for me in the end. <laughs> yeah, Van Damme was a good looking guy, man. I think he's still a good-looking guy, too. Shout out to Van Damme, man. Gave us those uh, movies as children. We grew up watching. We wanted to be like Sylvester Stallone. Uh, wanted to be like Dolph Lundgren. Carl Weathers, of course. Van Damme. Steven Seagal came along around the late 80s and started doing his thing. <laughs> but uh, that was pretty funny, boy. <laughs> Yeah, Van Damme, that dude was a great looking guy, man. I always thought Dolph Lundgren was the perfect, like, looking dude, man. That dude was just had the, the chiseled jawline, man. Like, Dolph Lundgren, man, he, he was a model. He, you guys know that he was with uh, Grace Jones? They had a child. I bet that child is like, I bet he looks like. He could knock anybody out. Grace Jones and Dolph Lundgren had a child? Man. <laughs> Andrew Tucker's laughing at Bon Scott's comment. But yeah, Dolph Lundgren, man. Mr. T, the A-Team. Man, all them 80s dudes was just masculine. Masculinity. And you say masculinity now, you probably get canceled. How dare you be masculine? Put this dress on. Absolutely not. I like the Boyka movies, Undisputed, I think it was called. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, I can't remember much about them. Was that the one with Wesley Snipes? Scott Adler. Adler says, do you think there was a better fighter than Bruce Lee on planet Earth out there? <laughs> um pretty sure there was only because I never seen Bruce Lee have an actual fight you know I uh, you know he's definitely one of the fastest and the most in shape the dude didn't have an ounce of fat on him so he's definitely up there but I don't know if I'd say he was the best of all time only because I have no footage of him actually fighting you know that guy Bolo I just watched a documentary on him remember the big buff Asian guy Bolo that dude was um I think he and Bruce Lee were doing some things on the set of the uh, of Enter the Dragon, you know. Bolo was looking diesel, wasn't he? Bolo, even the name is hard. Bolo sound like dude. You know, but dude, don't mess with dude. That dude's name is Bolo. Don't trip with him. Bolo. Special case that I thought Hergovich was respectful toward Joshua in that interview. Much of what he said was true. Um, yeah, he didn't say nothing crazy. It's just, you know, he was talking about Joshua didn't want to fight him. I thought, I don't know about that. Joshua fights everybody. And I don't think he's had everything necessarily handed to him either. But, you know, that, that's not really... Yeah, that is kind of disrespectful to say that AJ's had everything handed to him when his resume... He and uh, Joseph Parker have the best resumes in the heavyweight division. So if you take the toughest route, you didn't have everything handed to you. So that could be so shown as a sign of disrespect towards AJ. But, you know, he didn't go in talking crazy like Jarrell Miller. He's not one of those kind of trash talkers. Glad I'm glad he's not. Vaughn Scott says everybody started disrespecting him after he died, especially some of those he trained. Well, that's sad. 
Andrew Tucker World says Jet Lee and Jackie Chan took the torch. Yeah, Jet Lee, man. Someone asked Jackie Chan if he could have beat Bruce Lee. He said, nah, Bruce Lee would have got me. Jackie's such a humble guy. Yeah, and Jet Lee, man, that dude is fast, bro. Jet, I see what they call him, Jet Lee, man. That dude's like, <laughs> piece you up in like two tenths of a second. What happened to Jet Li? All these martial art dudes started, uh, you don't see them anymore, but we used to watch Bruce Lee movies and when I was growing up, then we wanna go downstairs and try them out on each other, me and my cousin, try to see if we learned anything from the movie. There's a, I forget the UFC guy, uh, but there's an actual UFC fighter that says he learned how to fight mixed martial arts by watching YouTube. I was like, wow, that's interesting. Steven6676, uh, six, 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 shout out to you. Uh, thanks for watching. He says, who do you think, what do you think Joe Joyce will do next in his career? Wow. That's a good question. That's a good question. I don't know. I, I did a, a, a live stream saying I want him and Wilder to mix it up. I originally had Joe Joyce winning that. Now I might be, I don't know, because Deontay looked so bad in his last fight. Yeah, I don't know, man. Maybe maybe Deontay Wilder, maybe Jarrell Miller, somebody like that. Jarrell Miller might be a good taste for Joyce's stamina since they're both way up around the 300s. Vaughn Scott says Tony Ja is another I like watching. Yeah, I watched a documentary on him, but I don't remember seeing any of his movies. But I saw, I was like, this name isn't ringing a bell, but I definitely know who you're talking about. Yeah, I definitely know who you're talking about. I think uh, Viking Samurai did a video on him too, Tony Ja. I think he started making a lot of movies overseas, if I'm if I'm correct. Andrew Tucker says, Bond, so many classics. First time I saw Jackie Chan was in a Bruce Lee movie. True story. Oh, they did a movie together? I remember Jackie Chan was in Cannonball Run. You know those old uh, movies uh, with Burt Reynolds, Dom DeLuise? <laughs> yeah, that's way before most of y'all times, I'm sure. Cannonball Run. <laughs> Are they going to do, I think they might be doing another rush hour right here. I don't know. I haven't seen Chris Tucker in a minute in the movies anyway. It's been so long since Andrew Ruiz fought like two years ago, not looking good for him. Yeah, that's a long time, man. That's a long time to sit out, talk, you know, for whatever reason. Just get some fights, even if you got to go to Canada or Mexico. Just, I think uh, Michael Hunter's got to fight this weekend in Mexico, he said some dude with 23 wins been calling him out and he was going to Michael Hunter's fight. So Michael Hunter's even having a fight in Mexico. You just got to stay active. AJ and Joseph Parker are showing that activity is paramount. Special cases. I think Hergovich was speaking about his time with Matchroom and knowing how Hearn paid the big dollars to get opponents and sparring partners, but not being prepared to invest into Hergovich. Oh, okay. That would make sense. That would make sense if Hergovich was thinking, you know, he wasn't getting adequate attention and taken care of. Yeah, I can understand that. Andrew Tucker World says, Jackie was an extra in Bruce Lee movie, Big Bro as a Bag. Oh, I didn't know that. That's a fun fact. Andrew Tucker World's dropping on y'all. He said, Jackie Chan was an extra in a Bruce Lee movie. I'm going to have to check that out, just like Van Damme was an extra in Breaking. <laughs> I was an extra in a couple movies. Hergovich got treated by Hearn the same as Joyce did with Warren. They were not a priority for those two promoters. Yeah, Hergovich was talking about, I guess, Croatia. They thought a Croatian having the title wasn't very marketable. I'm like, whoever is the best is the best. I don't care where they're from. You know, as long as they're the best, give them their props. 
Monroe Hutchin versus Rocky Balboa. Yo, I gonna go with Rocky Balboa, yo. Three wages. Cause it ain't about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward, how much you can take. That's how winning is done. Chris Tucker still filling that Epstein Island. Yeah, that thing was, uh, yeah, there's some, yeah, Chris Tucker, man, that story is not what it's been presented to be. But of course, they're going to go after Chris Tucker because he's a professed Christian. You know, they always got to go after Christians. You could worship, uh, you could worship a tree, and they'll big you up. You worship Yeshua, then all of a sudden you get attacked. Bond Scott says Ty thinks the same about Usyk. Oh, I, th I think that's a typo. Not as marketable. He may get robbed against Fury. I think Fury was saying that Usyk wasn't marketable, but I think whoever does the work in the ring should be marketable based off your performance in the ring. It shouldn't always come down to. You know, do you have jokes? Can you, can you, can you juggle? Even though we saw Usyk juggle when he does uh, those public workouts, dude, be out there juggling. Nah. And he's got the same birthday as Muhammad Ali. Mm, something else they can market. But I think Usyk's near the end of his career. I don't think he wants to have too many fights. He'll probably fight Fury twice and then, you know, hang up the gloves, you know, he doesn't really have no more to prove. I mean, he's, he's beat AJ twice. He knocked out Tony Bellu, Bellu. So he has nothing to, he's undefeated. Even if he loses to Fury, he has, he has no more to prove. So I think he's going to be, I think he's going to be calling it a day real soon. He doesn't want to stick around too much and get hit by these, uh, Big old monster heavyweights. The heavyweights of today are a lot bigger than they were in the 80s and 90s, with the exception of Lennox Lewis, Riddick Bow, and Andrew Galata, and Jorge Luis Gonzalez from Cuba. You guys remember him? I forgot to mention Jorge Luis Gonzalez when I was naming my top five knockouts of all time. I forgot to mention what Riddick Bow did to Jorge Luis Gonzalez. Man, the hype to that for that fight was getting crazy. Gonzalez was throwing glasses at Riddick Bow. They had to put up a plastic shield in between them at the press conferences and weigh-ins. He was like, I killed you, Americon. He had beat Riddick Bow and Lennox Lewis in the Pan Am games, but he stopped Riddick Bow. He didn't stop Lennox Lewis, but Riddick beat that dude so bad. He had the bald head up top, the greasy like Jerry curl on the back, and it was just flying all over the, all, all over the place. Andrew Tucker World says that's why I said Fury will win. Yeah, Fury, Fury definitely can he can pull it off. Special case said I want to see Usyk beat Fury and then retire before the rematch. Payback for what Fury did to Klitschko. Yeah, that would be funny. And then we would get uh Maybe we'd still get AJ Fury then. Emmanuel Broderick says Usyk would need to win clearly on the cards. Usyk would need to win clearly on the cards. If the fight is closer, they're going to give it to Fury. Yeah, you might be right about that. You might be right. But yeah, uh, when Riddick Bo fought... Uh, Jorge Luis Gonzalez, he pretty much kept him in the corner the whole fight. His hair was just flying around. And what's crazy, too, before that fight, I mean, when they met at the center of the ring, Jorge Gonzalez was, like, saying something to Riddick or moving his lips. He was just like, even my buddy Daryl was like, oh, shoot, like, Riddick is in trouble. Then the dude didn't do nothing but sit in the corner and get blasted. <laughs> he was utterly get blasted. And then Tim Witherspoon beat him, too, on the night where Lennox Lewis and Holyfield, it was a triple header in Madison Square Garden. It was Lennox Lewis versus Ray Mercer, Holyfield versus Bobby Chez, and Tim Witherspoon put hands on Jorge Gonzalez. Oh, shout out to Thunders Productions with the $10 holla. 
Thank you, Thunders Production. I appreciate that. Much respect to you, man. Thunders Production, donating 10 to the platform. Much love to you, Thunders Productions. Much love. Go subscribe to Thunders Productions if you haven't. Go make it happen. And uh, speaking of Jorge Luis Gonzalez, when I was at the Lennox Lewis Lionel Butler fight in Sacramento, Jorge Gonzalez, I was on near the front row. He was like maybe five rows ahead of me. He kept mad dogging me. Even my buddy Arturo pointed it out. He's like, you see him trying to mad dog you? He was out there with a big old cowboy's hat, a cowboy hat, not, you know, like a literal cowboy hat. But thanks again to Thunders Productions and Andrew Tucker World with the with the uh, super chats, much love. Adarisa's Riddick Bow versus Ike Abayabuchi. Ooh, I got Ike. I got Ike. Just yeah, in a close one. Ike by decision. Adarisa's Tim Witherspoon versus David Tua. Ooh, David Tua is looking diesel right now. Oh, that's some. I'm glad you brought up David Tua. There's something I want to say. I'm going to say, uh, oh, man, I don't know. It's so different styles. I'm going to say draw. I don't know, man. I don't know. It could go either way. I wouldn't be surprised who won that. Vaughn bon Scott says, Hergovich, I'm the daddy. I heard you've been calling out everyone else's name, but I can't hear my name. Are you ready? I'm ready, Dubois said. <laughs> so Dubois is up in his uh, trash talk game, huh? Looks like it could be Dubois versus Hergovich. Hey, I, I would watch that. Tim Witherspoon versus Reese Witherspoon. I got Timmy Tim on that one. But yeah, what I wanted to say about David Tua, you know, everybody talking about that Mike Tyson is too old to fight Jake Paul. Do you think that uh, Jake Paul could beat David Tua? David Tua is like around my age. Go check out David Tua's Instagram. You look at David Tua working out and tell me if you think Jake Paul could handle uh, early 50-year-old uh, David Tua. He's somewhere between, I think, 50 or 53, somewhere around there, maybe 49. I think it's 50-something. Do you think Jake Paul could beat David Tua? Go check out David Tua's training and get back at me on that one. Chet Perry says, Pernell Whitaker versus Hector Camacho. Ooh. Oh, yeah, I took a picture with uh, Hector Camacho Jr., man. Shout out, class act, man. Nell Whitaker, that's a truth. I don't know, man. That's a tough one. A lot of people would say Pernell Whitaker. A lot of people would say um, Camacho in his prime. So I, I, I don't know. I'm going to leave that one alone. That's a good matchup, though. No chance that Jake Paul beat any professional heavyweight. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying, especially the stocky built kind like David Tua and Mike Tyson. You don't have much real estate to work with. You know, it's not much body to hit because they're so compact. And I think David Tua is even shorter than Mike Tyson with bigger legs. Thunder's production says Hector's hand was lightning fast. Yeah, Hector was Hector was no joke, man. He was a great fighter. I was watching his son hit the heavy bag when we were out here at the gym, and uh, his son is fast. I was like, before I knew who he was, I'm like, man, this guy is fast. I didn't know it was Hector Camacho Jr. You know, he's a real cool guy. I got a photo with him. Shout out to him. Shout out to Tim Witherspoon, all the cool people that I met. You know, of course, me and Viking Samurai have been talking for a while. It was great to finally meet up with him. And, uh, yeah, I think Viking Samurai might be fighting Shane Mosley next. Shane Mosley. Riddick Bow versus David Tua. Ooh, that's a good one. I got David Tua. 
based off the chin factor. I just think his chin would stand up to Riddick's best. But that's, man, David Tua. It's a big height difference, though. Riddick Bowe, 6'5". David Tua, like 5'10", 5'9"-ish. David Tua definitely didn't let himself go. The dude's posting his Instagram workouts, and he's he's working out like he's got a fight coming up. Maybe he's going to ring, say, Jake Paul beat Mike Tyson, which I don't see happening. Maybe David Tua will be like, hey, um, hey, what's up? I'm ready. David Tua, man. Devin Haney versus Tank Davis. I got Tank Davis, man. Contrary to popular belief, Tank Davis can actually box. He's not just a puncher. I know a lot of people think because you're a puncher that automatically means you don't know how to box. I've seen fights where uh, Tank Davis is really doing his thing and his movement and his hand placement. So in a battle of the boxers, and the one that can punch, you got to go with the guy that can punch and box because he's got more in it, more in his uh, toolbox. I used to say I, I can't watch no more David Haney fights. I'd rather watch Grass Grow, but uh, he's been looking a little more interesting lately since he moved up. There's not a snowball's chance in Hades that Tyson will have or allow to have a loss against Jake on his record. Yeah, he ain't going out like that. Mike ain't going out like that. People people don't know the dudes that grew up from the 80s and 90s. We, we built a little different, you know. We actually care about what happens. And I was watching a video, I, f I forget his name, but he broke, he put up footage of Mike training now. And then when Mike was younger, you didn't see no difference. So everybody talking about Mike's a little slower. If you put it side by side, you don't see it. It's like people just think they have to say that. Like, well, you know, Mike might might have slowed down a little bit. And those of you saying that Mike Tyson is just in it for the money, that's not true either. Because I found out Mike Tyson has the number one vape company in the country. And those sell at $25 a pop. So Mike Tyson's not going to take a dive. He's not in it for the money. He's in it because he likes to hurt people. He's in the hurt business, as he says. So Jake's in trouble. Mike's not in it for the money. He's going to make a lot of money, but he's not training this hard because, you know, he, his uh, car car payment is due. None of that. Um, I'm I'm going to say, uh, what about Holyfield versus Veach? Oh, yeah, that's because Holyfield's had a lot of wars, though. Mike Tyson hasn't had so many wars. Holyfield's been too many wars with Bo and Lennox Lewis, James Tony. People forget that boxers may lose speed, but they rarely lose their punching power. Exactly. Teddy Atlas says power never dies, never dies. That's why you hear so many people that are elderly in their 70s and 70s and 80s knocking out people like 50 years younger than them, 60 years younger. Jake has no defense and his chin can't handle a true KO artist punch. Nah, when Tyron Woodley hurt him in the first fight, he, he or hit him with a shot in the first fight, Jake looked like he was a little shook. Almost went through the ropes for a split second. I think I missed your comment again, Adderay. Let me see if I can uh, pull it up. I think I missed your comment. I think it vanished. Let me see. Oh, yeah, you said, oh, no, I got it. You said Riddick Bow. Oh, you said, oh, it was Chet. What about Holyfield? Oh, yeah, I read that. Okay. Maybe I didn't miss. At Tyson's age, he has one great round left in him. That's all it will take. I think Mike Tyson could go however long the fight is. I mean, like, like his trainer said, he's running an hour before he even starts training. So that means his cardio is pretty good. And this is while he's like 250. He's going to try to come down to like 215, 220. So if he can run for an hour at 250, and Jake's not even used to fighting at heavyweight, this will be his first fight at heavyweight. He's in trouble. I don't know what people are talking about. Like, Jake going to hurt this man. No, he's not. 
James Tony versus David Tua next would be great. Uh, David Tua would, man, James Tony, first of all, I don't think he should be fighting no more. I saw that little fight with Razor Ruddick, and James Tony's speech is so slurred right now. Of course, we got Shannon Briggs versus Rampage Jackson coming up. I think both guys, both them dudes are hilarious, first of all, but I think Shannon will probably win that in the ring, in the octagon, I'm going to give it to Rampage. Rampage has a pretty good podcast. It's called Jackson, J-A-X-X-O-N. But uh, Mike Tyson, I'm telling you, you guys keep focusing on age. You're going to be in for a rude awakening, man. If you, Like I said, if you just look, forget the age, just look at the footage of them training. Who looks more ferocious, the 27-year-old Jake Paul or the 57-year-old Mike Tyson? If you didn't know their age, who would you pick? I think just about 99.9% .9 of the people would say Mike Tyson all day. Boxing on the Edge in the building. Go subscribe to my dude, Boxing on the Edge. Great platform, knows his boxing. He's got hands as well. He can light you up. Uh, he says, J. Roos, how you doing, man? Mike Tyson was a beast in training. Hope he flattens Paul. I think he will. Yeah, he's he's putting in work, man. He's he's fighting. His trainer said he's treating this like, you know, like he was in the old days. And he's not in it for the money. He is the number one vape company in America. I don't condone vaping, but Mike's got the number one vape company selling at $25 a pop. So he doesn't need the money. He's not going to take a dive. Jake Paul's in trouble. Have the ER on speed dial, Mr. Jake. Because it's going down just like you. He looks possessed. Laugh out loud. I love it. <laughs> boxing on the Edge. Shout out to Boxing on the Edge. Y'all go check out his platform. Adderi says, can you imagine a hybrid cross mix between Terrence Crawford and Jerron Ennis, but as a, as a heavyweight boxer? <laughs> yeah, that would be that would be nuts, man. That would be absolutely nuts. Terrence Crawford, of course, one of my favorite fighters. Love me some Terrence Crawford. It's probably some heavyweights Terrence Crawford could beat right now. Is he training with Dewey uh, Bane Cooper? Mike Tyson, nah. Uh, his trainer is a guy named Rafael. He's an ex, uh, like a mixed martial arts guy. Um, yeah, he even uh, had some headgear working with Mike in the ring. <laughs> Dewey Bain Cooper. <laughs> Chet Perry, do you think Mike will fight again after this one? He might, because once he gets a taste of blood, Mike's like a shark. He might, I think it's going to activate something in his DNA. He might. I'd watch it. And people keep talking about he didn't look good in the Roy Jones fight. There was a no knockout clause in the Roy Jones fight. Mike was pulling his punches. It might look like he's going in hard, and then it's kind of like, uh. So, yeah, that's why there was, that's the only reason that, uh, that Roy Jones was saved. Lennox Lewis versus Ike. I got my dude Lennox. Too big, too strong, had to reach, too much ring IQ, more experience. Ike would have been tough, but uh, I got Lewis. Lennox. Shout out to Lennox Lewis. The pugilist specialist. Burt Cooper. Ooh, that would have been nice. Burt Cooper versus David Tua. That would have been a war, but David Tua. Burt Cooper never gave anybody an easy fight. Burt Cooper, Ray Mercer. Burt Cooper, Holyfield. Burt Cooper, uh, didn't he fight Michael Moore too? It's going to be like Clint Eastwood, the old killer in the movie. Clint Eastwood, man, I haven't heard that name in a minute. It's going to be like Clint Eastwood, the old killer in the movie, Unforgiven. Mike's back and still deadly. Yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah. And the thing, too, you know, things are kind of reversed in the world today. 57 in 2024, 
isn't what 57 was in 1980. Why that is, I'm not really sure. I don't know if it's the, the supplements or just what, but if you look at someone back in the 80s at 57, they don't look like someone today that's 57. Someone even posted on Instagram how people like in, in, uh, in their 40s looked back in the 80s and 70s. They looked really beat down and tired for some reason. I don't know if it was society or just what. But a better food, yeah, that yeah, it could be the food, yeah. So 57 today isn't what 57 was back then. So if Mike can stay off the smoking and drinking, um, then we got us an uh, interesting night. No lead in the pipes. Yeah, I forgot about that. What's that stuff uh, in the walls too? That asbestos? No radiation from those old TVs. <laughs> oh, man. Chet Perry, thank you, brother. Hey, thank you for tuning in. Vaughn Scott. Chet Perry, Andrew Tucker World, Boxing on the Edge, Thunders Productions, Adore Pennant. Everybody that's tuning in, I appreciate the love. You know, I, like I said, that interview I saw with Hergovich made me go live. I was like, man, this guy, this guy's actually, I'm starting to like Hergovich. I was never a Hergovich guy. Then I saw the interview. I'm like, this guy is pretty witty. He's off the top, just coming with the jokes. I was like, I like Hergovich. I think AJ will knock him out, but I like her. <laughs> you know, he might win the press conference. It's like AJ said, he's standing on business. <laughs> I hate that new phrase. Everybody's saying that. I'm standing on business. Okay. Who's, have you ever wondered when these new phrases start? Like, who started them? Like, who started that? And then it just got popular. I always wondered that. Because I'm a thinker. Adarese says uh, Flip Hergovich versus Bakadir Jolalov would be a very good boxing match. I'm going to have to go from what I saw of Jolalov. I can't even say his name, but I'm going to have to go with him over Hergovich. That dude can punch. He can punch. He put my dude Richard Torres to sleep in the Olympics. And Richard Torres is a good fighter. Put him to sleep. Overhand right. Does Mike smoke weed before a fight while training? I, I, I know back in the day he was doing all types of stuff before fights and was still blasting people. But um, I think he might have smoked before that Jake Paul, I mean, before his fight with Roy Jones, but... I don't think he's doing it now. I think he's taking it seriously because he doesn't want to lose to no YouTuber. That's not going to go down well. That's not going to age well. If you want to talk about aging, that's not going to age well if you lose to Jake Paul. I would even be chilling on my podcast like I never had a fight. I'd be like, oh, I fought Jake Paul. I don't remember that. I got amnesia or something. Yeah, that, that definitely wouldn't age well losing to a Mr. Jake Paul or any of the Pauls, Logan Paul, any of them, KSI. Like I said the other day, what is the appeal with KSI? Do you have to be like, oh, maybe people in the UK just find them funny. Jalalov, the big, who's, uh, I gotta, wait, what happened to the comment? Says Jalal of the big Uzbek guy can crack. Yeah, he can punch, man. In fact, Malik Scott uh, was bigging him up. He was saying that uh, he, he thinks he's going to be a future uh, great fighter. Yeah, he, he looks like uh, being that tall, too. Yeah, Bob Aram is dropping the ball on. Jalalov, the man is ready for top 10 guys right now. Bob Arum just, he seems to drop the ball on a lot of people like Terrence Crawford. Come on, Bob. Shout out to Kurt who does the best imitation of Bob Arum I've ever heard in my life. Special K. Oh, I read that already. Yeah, if you hear Kurt over from Counterpunch Boxing News, <laughs> He does a great Floyd, oh, Mayweather. 
Oh, he's a southpaw too. Boxing on the head says he's a southpaw too. I don't I didn't realize that. Oh man. You can punch from the southpaw stance? Wow. I know a lot of southpaws are off balance, but if his balance is good and he's throwing punches like that, I don't even know if Richard Torres would want to rematch in the pros. That's a lot of uh that's a lot of pressure on Richard. Like, do you want to get that payback? Or do you want it to go down that he knocked you out in the amateurs? Adarisa's Bach. Oh, man, I, that name is so hard. I'm going to call him BJ. <laughs> he's a very good heavyweight southpaw. Yeah, man, I think he's going to be an up-and-comer. Might want to sign with Eddie Hearn to get a little more notoriety. And Eddie Hearn just really knows how to promote his guys. Anderson, Joel Olive, Hunai, Hovan, Nisian, Dubois, Utama, Utuama. The heavyweight division is in good hands for the future. Man, these are some names right here, man. My goodness. I probably mispronounced everything but Dubois. <laughs> Dynamite Daniel Dubois. See what happens, America? Y'all drop the ball at heavyweight. And now I can't pronounce anybody's name. Thanks a lot, American heavyweights. Adoraces Arslan Yalyev is a very good heavyweight prospect from Russia. I'm going to have to check him out. <laughs> bon Scott says, nah, bud, you did good. Laugh out loud. Yeah, man, that was, whoa. It's a lot of consonants up there with very little vowels. Those are always hard to pronounce. I got an A plus in English in my high school year at Lincoln High. Shout out to Lincoln High, Southeast Dago, baby. <laughs> oh, this is off topic. Um, I was watching an interview with a Bay Area rapper by the name of Spice One. And I was like, finally, someone had the heart to say it. They asked him who he listens to these days. They said, do you listen to Drake? He was like, nah. He's like, he's for the girls. I was like, finally, somebody that can't stand Drake's music. Spice One's beats destroy. Spice One's lyricism, everything he does destroys Drake. Not even in the same league. Uh, but back to boxing. Uh, bon Scott says not. Nah. Oh, I already read that. Boxing on the edge says Utama, Utama looks extremely talented. Another southpaw with crazy hand speed. I'm going to have to check this guy out. Jay Adore says, Jay Roos, what state are you from? I grew up 35 years in San Diego, California. Now I'm in Wacklana. Unfortunately, Wacklana is no California. But yeah. West Coast all day, baby. Boxing on the edge. Oh, you guys are talking to each other. Jal Jalalov has everything. His movement is impressive for someone his size, and he ticks every box. Just a chin that still has a question mark. Okay, yeah, he's got to get that chin tested. Sometimes guys that are hard to hit, when they do get hit, it shocks their system because they're not used to dudes being able to reach them like Mahmoudov on the day of reckoning. He got that chin tested and the body tested, and he didn't respond well at all. Y'all go subscribe, like I said, to Boxing on the Edge. He knows his stuff. Go follow him on Instagram. You can see him doing workouts, and he can box, man. And he's in great shape. Go subscribe to Andrew Tucker World. Counterpunch Boxing News. I don't even need to tell you guys to subscribe to Showbiz. 
that dude is breaking the internet with subscriptions. Show biz the dope. What's up with you? <laughs> Shout out to Showbiz. I had to go watch his reaction to AJ knocking out in Ghana. He's hilarious. He's like, get out of here. Go back to MMA. This is our sport. It's like, you tell him, Biz. Boxing on the edge. Thanks, brother. Oh, man. No problem, man. I got to give credit to great boxing platforms out there. There's a lot of bad ones, so I got to big up the good ones. Subscribe to Boxing on the Edge. Thanks for the heads up, Jay Roos. Oh, yeah, man. You won't be disappointed. You will not be disappointed at all. Oh, I was on Tony's Reviews last night. If you want to go check out his live stream, we were talking some uh, AJ and Ganu. And they hadn't heard Ganu give the sleepy excuse. And we were talking some Jake Paul Tyson. So go subscribe to Tony's Reviews. Go check out the live stream uh, we did last night. It was pretty interesting. Emmanuel Broderick says, showbiz is funny. <laughs> yeah. When he screams, oh, yeah, showbiz is hilarious, man. I think why he's so big, because he's just, you could tell it's not a front or an act. That's really who he is, man. He's just himself, and it, it really comes through. Yeah, man, showbiz. Shout out to him. Shout out to my dude, Chris Jones, over there with Pump Chasers. Shout out to EA Ski, making them beats from the Bay Area. Did a lot of Spice Ones music. Shout out to EA Ski. Man, showbiz is hilarious, man. If you guys want a good laugh, go pull up, type in showbiz, the adult Stephen A. Smith. When uh, Stephen A. Smith was hitting the boxing pads, they were trying to, uh, showbiz was trying to do, uh, try not to, try not to laugh video watching Stephen A. Smith hit the pads. <laughs> right when Stephen A. hit the first pad, showbiz started cracking up. He couldn't even take it. Right when Stephen A. threw that crazy, <laughs> right? <laughs> showbiz was like, <laughs> man, I've watched that so many times. <laughs> He didn't even last 10 seconds, man. Stephen A had like no type of coordination, man. That looks so bad. Bond Scott says, uh, Engano got on my nerves. Take your lick. Don't don't complain when you got 20 million in the bank, which you would not have had which you would not have had if not for boxing. Yeah, absolutely. Emmanuel says his KO reactions are hilarious. I can't stop laughing. Yeah, man. Showbiz is a funny dude, man. He said I was funny, but man, that dude is hilarious. <laughs> yeah, showbiz, dude. And what I like about it, too, what I like about Showbiz, he doesn't, he takes it seriously, but he doesn't, you know, get all, you know, a lot of these. Uh, other channels get all angry if you say something against a fighter. He's he's a fan of the sport, like he says. So shout out to all the great boxing platforms out there, man. Everybody doing their thing. Boxing Wave, Mr. Boxing Today 2. He really knows his heavyweight boxing, man. Shout out to all that. Tim Witherspoon, shout out to him. Shout out to my son, Lennox Roos. Shout out to Viking Samurai, like I said earlier. How long have I been on here? Adore says boxing is better than MMA. Yeah, absolutely. 100. Yeah, 100. Absolutely. Watch that guy, Mo Jahid Fadulat, on YouTube. He does cartoons of MMA.
boxing, his videos are hilarious. Okay, thanks for letting me know. <laughs> I got to check that out. Anthony Joshua will become heavyweight champion again. I believe so. I believe so. Uh, thanks for coming in, uh, Thunders Productions. I appreciate that. It says, see you later, Jay Rusin. Peace out, chat. I'm back, y'all, but uh, I got to handle a call. So uh, thanks for tuning in. LSR forever. And be fearless. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for watching.